I'm Eric Mesa with NewShooter.com, and I'm at CES 2019, and I'm with Jeremy. How you doing, Jeremy? Good, How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I'm here because of you, because you got something super cool to show me right now. We're, we're pretty proud of this one. This is a nice one. Um, what if I told you that a full-frame mirrorless camera from one of the main photo manufacturer, camera manufacturers, was capable of doing ProRes RAW recording. I'd say no way. No way, you can't do that. That's, that's a sin. And then what if I told you that we were doing it over HDMI? I would say you, no way. You can't do that. <laughs> well, we are doing it, and we've been doing it for about uh, six months together with, with Nikon, Nikon for the rest of the world. Um, and it's a very proud moment yesterday when we got to announce our work together. It's not shipping yet, um, but we wanted to showcase, Nikon wanted to showcase the upgradability of the Z series cameras, yeah. and we're a big part of that. And oh, I always like a bit of a promotion, and CES is pretty nice to promote at. Not bad. So you'll see it later in the year. Um, the, as we get closer to the final development cycles, yeah. there's a lot of testing to do. Sure. There's a lot of real world situations to, because these cameras are not just used for video, right? So there's yeah. a lot of photo situations that we don't normally consider in terms of use cases that we mm -hmm. have to go through. Plus, we're working out how much we can really get out of it. You know, is it 12 bit? log or linear is it is it how many pixels how many lines of resolution right. so there's still a lot of that development work going on right. but it's it's at the fringe end of it we know it all works we know we're capable of it we've been recording it the footage you see here is gorgeous and it's all done from the sensor in ProRes RAW to a Ninja 5. All right so I was at NAB yep we we did an interview with you mm -hmm. you looked into that camera yes. and you said we can do this. Yes. We can get raw over HDMI. You guys, Nikon, yep. Panasonic, come on, come on get yeah. in the game. So then the next port of call was to go to each of their head offices <laughs> and request exactly that. Yeah. Right? And being a close partner in some cameras and other cameras, you know, they're not as open in yeah. different companies, yeah. which is their choice. And we don't take it personally. We just like keep asking the question, can you open that one up? Can yeah. you open that one up? Yeah. So we went around and asked, can you do HDMI RAW? Some of them flat out were like, I don't think we can. Probably pipeline in their cameras. They didn't really think of it at the beginning or it's a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. Some of them were like, yeah, let us think about it. And they're probably still thinking about it. But a, a few of them were very positive about it. And the most positive was Nikon. Mm -hmm. So hats off to them for yeah. pushing the boat a little bit. And I think that's a really good fit. When you look at Nikon, they have, well, they have a great new product. I mean, this is a really, really nice it's camera, a camera, right? And also, you know, I hate to say this, you know, maybe I'll get kicked in the pants for it, but they don't have a professional video broadcast cinema camera. lineup. No, they, are, they don't have a division, this, they don't have a management team, right. they don't have any of that. So yeah. they, they got nothing to protect. They can only go up with what they got. If they eat some of that, then it will, but I don't even yeah. know whether you know, I don't. I hesitate to say these big statements of, "Oh, this one product's going to eat everything." You know, yeah. I don't yeah. think that's the point. The point is, there's a whole new customer base that there is a lot of metrics on of the number of videos being created that are at a high quality today yeah. and being posted everywhere. That that is a big enough opportunity for this type of solution. And the, probably the main thing we announced, other than the technical achievement of ProRes RAW over HDMI from a Nikon, is the filmmaker's kit here in the US, which is a $4,000 kit. You get a Pelican case, you get Ninja 5, you get the Z7, yeah, sorry, Z6, you get a lens, you get the adapter, you get a, a Moza gimbal, you get two batteries, you get the cable, you get everything you need. It's loaded. For, for four grand. Yeah. Now, that's a $5,200 of value in it, but what it is is the the upper echelon of what a social media vlogger could do to make a cinematic creation. And that's what they all are looking for today yeah. because the level of content delivery is going up. Yeah. And that's a great thing for newshooter.com. Yeah. It's a great thing for Atomos. Yeah. And it's a great thing for Nikon. And I think this is a massive push into that user base. Are you, do you think, I'm pretty sure, maybe this, is a, this is a loaded question. Yes. Can you see other cameras now wanting to do, wanting to get involved in this since you guys kind of basically cracked the code? I think they're going to have to, right? Yeah. Uh, in the end, it's not a secret that if you want Canon to do something, a good partner to start with is Nikon. And if you want Sony to do something, a good partner to start with is Panasonic. Yeah. And everyone has their arch enemy and they're all their frenemy. You know, kind yeah. of like you feed off each other and sure. I've got mine and sure, new sure. shooters got it there. <laughs> but in the end, I think 
this is a great step forward for customers. It offers a, a killer solution at a really high level for a low cost, and that's always great for business. Yeah. And I don't see a scenario into the next couple of years where these type of solutions are not more and more ex delivered and accepted yeah. by the customers. And we're here to just accelerate it. Yeah. Can Nikon do RAW internally in this camera long term? Of course they could. Do we make it a really, really compelling solution now? Yes, we do. Yeah. Do we have a bigger monitor with more experience in HDR processing than what is ever going to go on a photography camera? Yeah. Yes, we do. So there's a lot of reasons yeah. to step into this solution. And the Ninja 5, in the size and form factor, it's been super successful for us. And we thank all the customers out there. I know a lot of them read their articles on newshooter.com. And we're in really good um, hands at, in explaining these things. So we thank you for all your support. Oh yeah, no problem. Uh, okay, quick question about, you know, you touched a little bit about, you know, bit depth. Yeah. Are we going to get like full 12 bit or is there any kind of something that we're not going to get because we have to get this raw signal through an HDMI? No, no. it's basically, um, you know, my, in the recordings, we, we it was 12 bit that we were doing. Um, I think, Nikon are, are reticent to give the exact specs, whether it's linear or log or exact frame rates. There's a bunch of system things that we have to take care of. But I can tell you, we were recording 4K or more lines of resolution, and we were in 12-bit linear, and then we processed it, and it's what you see here today. So what the final release will be, that's up to Nikon in the end. Um, but we'll be pushing them for as much as we can take from that sense. And I think that's what everyone wants, yeah, right? Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's really unbelievable what we are getting out of these cameras. It's crazy. Well, if you go back five years when I had lowly old Ninja 2, <laughs> right? Ninja 2, 1080p 30, 1080p, the little workhorse. A lot of people still using them, which, yeah. is, which is great. But that, it's a different world now. Yeah. You know, we're at bigger resolutions, we've got lots of dynamic range, the sensors are coming thick and fast, and the cameras are so light. I mean, this is, yeah. I can hold this all day. Yeah, it's crazy. That's right? a 12-bit shooting machine. It's nuts. It is, yeah, it it is, is nuts. nuts. <laughs> and, then you, and then to take it into what is the next evolution of ProRes, yeah. and as you know, I'm a big advocate of it, that ecosystem is growing, it will grow. This is another example of it expanding. Yeah. And no matter who's yeah. on the other side going, oh, I wish it doesn't, it's gonna win. Yeah. And we're right behind it. And now we've got Sony, Panasonic, Canon, and Nikon yeah. behind it. Yeah. Not, a bad yeah, not a bad set not bad. of companies to be launching a format. And oh, and it goes into Apple computers. Yeah, so It's exactly as it is over SDI, pretty same much. Thing. Exactly the same thing. I mean, right now we do up to 4K P60. This camera does 30. Um, HDMI would be capable of 60 um, in RAW, because RAW is less data rate, yeah. more processing after, so it's, yeah. it's smaller. Um, but you got to do more with it later. So it's all, it's exactly the same. We go, we can go up to any, you know, ProRes is an amazing standard and yeah. ProRes RAW can go past 16-bit linear if, if you want, um, if a camera will give it to you. So it's pretty impressive, the scalability, and that will just play in Final Cut tomorrow, you know, provided it goes through the approval process of the Apple QA pipeline, which is quite intense. Yeah. What was it like when you got that call from Nikon or Nikon or, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, when they when it's like, we cracked the code. I mean, yeah. was there that, was there a moment like that? Yes, yes, there, yes, there was. Um, and there's been quite a few of those moments over the last couple of years in, in general. Um, I f we're extremely lucky to be in an area that's growing so fast, it's still pushing technology in both computer land as well as imaging land. Hello, and when that, America. when that actually happened, it was like the world just changed and it hasn't changed yet. So you, you kind of had the vision of it changing. So when do you feel uh, it's going to get full on release when everybody be able to use these? The I think HDMI it's going to be, um, you know, from our side, we could probably do it pretty soon, maybe NAB or just after. Um, I know Nikon have a bit of a longer development cycle and they do have a lot more QA testing in their world to do with photo. So I would expect it probably, you know, definitely be this year, it'd be second half of the year. All right. Exciting stuff, Jeremy. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Cheers.